Hello and welcome to today's video. We're going to talk about the binomial theorem. And this is a really popular theorem and it's really useful. It helps you solve complex bino binomials really quickly, whereas they can take forever by hand. So the formula says if n is an element of z plus, and that's positive integers, just so you hopefully you feel comfortable with those now, so positive integers, then x plus y to the n, so the binomial expanded out, equals the sum summation of k equals 0 to n, n choose k, remember this is our combination, so that's how we say it, n choose k, times x to the n minus k, y to the k, where n choose k is called the binomial coefficient. It's kind of the number that goes in front of the binomial when you expand it out. And it can be proven with mathematical induction. We'll cover this later on. We'll actually do this proof because it's a really popular one. And it's a good one to make sure you understand mathematical induction. Um, so let's consider a basic example x plus y squared. This is easy enough to use normal methods, but I want to show you how to do it with the binomial theorem after we do, do it normally. We'll see how we get the same answer. So x plus y squared, I just rewrote it as x plus y times x plus y because it's the same thing. And the way we solve this is we do foiling, right? So first it's x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. Just from basic math, that's how we do that. We multiply these two. Uh, times these two plus these two plus these two then lastly plus those two. Okay So that's how we expand it regularly But now I want to use this binomial theorem just to show you guys how it works It says that x plus y squared is going to equal The summation and it's always going to start at zero So k equals zero to n n is two in this case, right? Because that's the power So that's n And then it says n choose k so it's going to be two choose k multiplied by x to the n minus k, so it's going to be 2 minus k, times y to the k. Okay, so I'm just going to plug this in all the way. So if I'm doing the summation, my first term is going to be 2 choose 0, because I'm starting at 0. So 2 choose 0 times x to the 2 minus 0 is x squared. Then y to the k is y to the 0, because k was 0. All right, plus, now it's going to be 2 choose 1 times um, x to the 2 minus 1 times y to the first plus now finally 2 choose 2 times x to the 2 minus 2 times y to the 2 and now we need to clean this up it's going to be what's 2 choose 0 let's think about our binomial form so 2 choose 0 not binomial form our definition of com combinations it's 2 factorial divided by 2 minus 0, zero factorial times 0 factorial and well 2 factorial is 2 2 minus 0 factorial is 2 so that's just going to be 1 and 0 factorial is 1 as well so the answer is 1 for that coefficient so we're left with x squared then y to the 0 anything to the power of 0 is 0 is 1 I mean not 0 my bad so plus and now 2 choose 1 anytime I have something that's just um, they're 1 apart it's just going to be the number so it's 2xy because that's 2 minus 1 and then y to the first. And if you wanted to, we could do it the official way. So 2 choose 1 equals 2 factorial divided by 2 minus 1 factorial times 1 factorial. And this is just the definition of combination. It's the n choose r formula. Um, so that's 2 factorial divided by 1 factorial times 1 factorial, which equals 2. And then we have 2 choose 2. Whenever we do um, a combination with 2, choose the exact number, the same number as it is, it's always going to equal um, 1. So we, it, we don't need to do it this time. Just know that when it's n, choose n, it's going to equal 1. And x to the 2 minus 2, well, that's x to the 0. Anything to the 0 is 1, so I don't need to put it. It's just y squared. And notice that this is equivalent to this, as it should be. So that's how you use the binomial theorem. It helps making solving these out a little bit easier once you'll really notice i mean i'm sure for this one you're probably like well that made it a lot harder right but you'll see in a second that it's it really does make things a lot easier so now we're going to expand a plus b to the sixth using the binomial theorem if we wanted to do this by hand we would have to multiply this out six times it would take a very long time trust me on that but the binomial theorem makes it a lot easier so a plus b to the sixth equals the summation between from k equals 0 to 6 um, of, again, 6 choose k times a now, a instead of x, because a is just our first term, a to the um, 
6 minus k times y to the k. Okay, so when I expand this out, I get, it's going to be long, but it's not going to be too bad. It would be worth doing by hand. So 6 choose 0 times a to the 6 times, I'm going to, it's y to the 0. It doesn't even need to be put there. So plus 6 choose 1 times a to the 5th, y to the 1st, plus 6 choose 2 times a to the 4th, y to the 2nd. You're going to notice a pattern pretty soon times 6 choose 3 if you haven't already, a to the 3rd, y to the 3rd. I'm going to start going down here. So plus 6 choose 4, a to the 2nd, y to the 4th, plus 6 choose 5, a to the 1st, y to the 5th, plus, um, I'll just put a 1 there. Okay, so plus, oh wait, no, it's b, isn't it? Dang it, Oops, I'll fix that in a second. Plus 6 choose 6, and now it's going to be a to the 0, so I don't need to put it y to the 6, or b to the 6. My bad, I just am used to putting those uh, y's, but they should all be b's, let me erase those. So hopefully you notice the pattern. The pattern is that a, the exponents are always gonna add up to n. So if you notice every time they add up to six, and also when I can go fast, when I just think about, okay, a has to get smaller by one every time. So it goes six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. And b on the other hand has to get bigger every time, so it's gotta go, um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And it's got to do that. It's the only way, that's the way to do the binomial theorem a little quickly. So now we would find, have to find all the combinatorics and figure out what each of these are. Remember 6 to the 0, anything to the 0 is just going to equal, um, so I'm just going to write the answers here, a plus b to the 6. Anything um, choose 0 is just going to be zero, uh, 1, so it's going to be a to the 6. Plus, now we need to do 6 choose 1. Anytime we're picking just 1, it's going to be 6. It's going to be the number that it is. So it's going to be 6, a to the 5th, b to the 1st. And now is when we actually have to start doing it. So what's 6 choose 2? It's 6 factorial divided by 4 factorial times 2 factorial. Well, that equals 30 because it's 6 times 5. The 4 factorial will cancel divided by 2 equals 15. So plus 15, a to the 4th b squared plus 6 choose 3 and now that's going to be um, 6 factorial divided by 3 factorial times 3 factorial that equals 6 times 5 times 4 that's going to be 120 divided by 3 factorial is 6 which equals 20 so um, now we have plus 20 a cubed b to the b to the b cubed as well and then now it's 6 choose 4, and this is um, a good property to know about binomials in general, or I guess combinatorics, is that 6 choose 2 is going to be equal to 6 choose 4. You'll see why in a second. It'd be divided by 2 factorial times 4 factorial, and know that those are the, that's the same as the one right above it. So that's going to be 30 divided by 2 again, which equals 15. The coefficients are actually going to be symmetric. So it's going to be 15 a squared b to the fourth, and if they're symmetric, the middle term had 20, now the one terms one out, one outside had 15. The term, terms two outside are going to have six. So six a to the first now, b to the fifth. Then lastly, the last terms are just going to have one, so b to the sixth. So this is the expanded form of a plus b to the sixth. And we'll learn Pascal's, Pascal's triangle, which is another way to do this in a second. That shows why they're, they are symmetric like this. But you can do it this way. You can do it to where you find the combinatoric of each one. It doesn't take that long. It's really, it, it's pretty simple. So hopefully this makes sense. Hopefully you see kind of what's good about the binomial theorem. It really does make a lot of complex processes a lot easier. So thanks for watching and we'll have a video about Pascal's triangle soon. Have a good one.